Okay, let's talk about colors for a moment. This is yellow ochre, and I threw in a tiny touch of burnt sienna. I uh, say burnt umber to get this color. So that's gonna look um, like this, and which is way too strong for the picture that we're doing. I want it maybe a little more like brown with a touch of yellow. Mm. Yeah, that's a little too green. All right, and if we go with Indian yellow instead of yellow ochre, we water that down. And then we add a little touch of brown in there. Okay, so I might end up going with um, Indian yellow instead of yellow ochre. I'm not sure. We'll see. Maybe I'll do highlights different back and forth. This is gray. This is a Davies gray. It's a really beautiful gray. And oh, there's yellow on my brush. Um, it's really beautiful gray. And you don't have to worry about making a gray and then thinning it down. So you can just use this straight. So I, I really like it. Um, over here, over here, I have burnt umber and a sepia brown. And there's a little bit of Payne's Gray mixed in. Then this one is turquoise paleo blue. This one is paint indigo. And this one is cobalt blue. So those are the blues, the blue options. I probably won't use blue very much, except well, the background will be blue on this image. And then this is an indigo mix. This is an indigo and Paris blue with some indigo in here. And then this one is just a rosador. Um, right here, Rose Door, which is this beautiful color. And that, oh, don't want it to be blue. That's for um, the inner of her ears and her little nose. This is a mix too. This is some um, burnt sienna, and I think, I think it's mixed with burnt umber. Burnt umber, burnt sienna. I want to go with something really dark for her strap. That's a beautiful color. You know what, let's try burnt umber and indigo. Okay, so this is burnt umber, indigo, and a tiny bit of Paris blue to get this color. Which is really nice too, and I might use that for this strap. I don't know, maybe this for some of her um, shadows. A lighter version of that, a thinner, like a washed version. By adding more water. So this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. Okay, so those are the colors I've got. That's what I'm choosing. They're coming out of this lovely pack. These are all schminky, except this one. These ones at the end here are Winsor & Newton. So that's the paint. Welcome to Watercolor by Scarlet. So I have been putting this little tutorial off for quite some time now. Um, I'm always looking for the best moment where it's quiet, the birds aren't making any noise, the animals outside aren't making noise, my husband's not working on the chicken coop or some other major project he's playing with. And you know what? I've, I've gotten to the point where I just have to give up and go ahead and do the voiceover so I can talk to you guys and get this done and get it out of here so you guys can enjoy this little tutorial. And you know, if I wait, it's just not going to work. So first of all, I apologize for the noise in the background. What you're hearing is his compressor. He's using a nail gun and he's building me a beautiful chicken coop, which is awesome. And if you want to know about that, I have a homesteading channel which talks about my animals and my chicken coops and chickens and all that good stuff. So this little piece, um, I'm starting with the background. I'm starting with the chair that Bella is sitting in. This is my goat. Her name is Bella, and she's in the back seat of the chair. Now, there's a story that goes with this little piece. Now, just to say for a moment, I'm just using the grays I talked about in the beginning. This is a mix of Payne gray, Payne's gray and maybe some indigo mixed in. I believe that's the indigo there. So it'll take me a few seconds to paint it, so I'll tell you about Bella in the meantime. Um, this is the day that we went to pick up Bruno. Bruno is my second goat. He's the older of the two. And he had a, an operation recently on his bladder. Um, he had some stones, a whole crazy complicated thing. He went to the vet numerous times. Nobody could tell us what was wrong or why it was happening. And in the end, his bladder erupted, ruptured in three places. And so he went to, obviously, to the hospital three hours away. And, uh, and they did a, they operated on him. They put everything back together. They removed a ton of, um, anyway, it's all very complicated. I don't want to gore you with the details. Um, and, uh, and then we had to go pick him up. He, they kept him for a few days and then we picked him up. So Bella, of course, did not want to stay home. She was sick of staying home all by herself for almost a week while he was off at the hospital. 
So we put her in the back seat, and now I have had Bella since she was two days old. And she is just the most adorable little little um, goat. She's a goat, not a lamb, in case you're, you're unsure. <laughs> um, she loves the car. If the car is open, she hops right in. She's always eager to go places. The one thing that she wants is to have her hay. So as long as she has a basket of hay, she's good to go. And I know this looks really uh, angelic. It, it's so pretty. It just looks, it looks very fake. Like this scene doesn't actually happen. Well, this painting is based on a photograph. And um, I will, I can put the photograph, I think actually I did put the photograph uh, on my online school. So if you guys want to see the reference photo for this, and I've actually turned it into a sketch. Um, I'm not sure what to call it, but it's like a, a vector sketch. So that you guys could take some pieces or download it or work with it and actually scan it. No, I'm sorry, download the vector sketch and then print it onto watercolor paper and do your own painting like this. So I think in the future I'm working on um, some ideas about going back and not just doing basic sketches but actually turning them into full-blown black and white super professional um, vectors. Like they, they look different than just a sketch. And uh, that you could paint along with me. So that's, that's my thought. So if you want to see the original uh, photograph or you want to download um, the sketch that goes with this, the paint along sketch, then join me on my online school and it'll all be there. So Bella is sitting in the sun. It's a beautiful sunny day. You can tell that she's a little bit in the shade, a little bit in the sun. The sun's coming in from the window and it's also coming in from the background. And if you can, can you guys tell that there's a little bit of glare? There's a little, um, little bit of shine on the back corner, let's see, on her, on her ears, the outer edge of her ears, above her head, um, on, the, on the chair itself, on the back edge. And this is masking fluid. So I use masking fluid. I don't, don't normally use masking fluid, um, but in this particular case, I thought I wanted to do that. And I, this, of course, reminded me why I don't typically use masking fluid. Because once you take it off, you're left with these lines. And if you want the lines, that's good. But the lines typically have very hard edges. So here I am, I believe at this point, aha, yes, I'm going to remove the masking. And you can see what I mean. It's lovely. It works in the straw. And it definitely worked. Great. Tomorrow's Halloween. Look at that. <laughs> it just popped up on my computer. Um, the, the marks, the white lines, they work really well in the straw. But on her... It always creates almost like a dead zone, so I have to go back over it with water and kind of liven up the um, the fibers of the paper because all the rest of the fibers of the paper have been touched by water, so they kind of poof up a little bit. So if you even if you don't add color, if you just go over it with wet with a wet brush, you can bring those fibers to life too, and then it doesn't look quite so harsh. And then also the little bit of paint that is around those white areas will blend in just enough that you don't have these really, really, really strong white lines. So, um, I think this piece would have been a lot easier if I hadn't have used masking fluid. I don't normally do it. It's not a big thing to me. It kind of, it annoys me. Um, because it's very finicky to use and it's a very small piece. So, of course, I had to go back and do a lot of work to fix and fiddle with all the masking lines and make them perfect. Overall, this is a really simple, basic illustration. Um, actually, it takes a long time considering it's just one overall layer. I'm not, I'm not really um, a master of illustrations. I tend to do things that are a little more realistic, like, like my in my leaf uh, photos, or I'm sure a lot of you have seen uh, my radish paintings and such. But uh, but I think it's a lot of fun to do these illustrations to just create something, uh, something that makes you smile. And also, this this is Bella, right? She exists. So I did work on this a little bit after this, uh, after I stopped filming. Not too much. I did a little more cleanup, and I think I fixed her strap as well. Um, but overall, I'll put the final image also on the um, on my online school. So if you guys are interested in seeing that, it'll be there too. I did talk about all the colors in the beginning, which is why I'm not going through the colors in too much detail, well, at all, because I've already discussed them with you. But I hope that you enjoyed this little fun thing. Um, I don't normally do these, but I think if, if, uh, if you guys like them, let me know. Give me a thumbs up. Let me know that you like this and you want to see more of it. And um, 
and I'll think about doing some more in the future because I'm having a lot of fun working. Uh, I'm having a lot of fun painting my animals and, and working in this style. I, of course, will still do um, the more realistic stuff, but you know, just for fun. Thanks for watching. I'm Scarlett, and I will see you in tomorrow's tutorial. Toodaloo!